Welcome to Journey to 600. Today we're going to be talking about special tests. Specifically, we're just going to be looking at the hip joint, but various things. So you can break it up into different categories. We're going to look at intraarticular, meaning inside the joint. So you're going to be looking at osteoarthritis, labrum, and impingement. And then we're going to look at extra articular tests. That's going to look at things outside the joint. So that can be muscle, nerve, and then we have just some other special tests of the hip. Starting us off, intraarticular, um, just those general tests for OA is going to be Faber and Scour. And this is just going to tell us if it is that intraarticular pathology, which is a very general test. And for Faber, the positive test would just be that there's some reproduction of pain or asymmetry and range of motion when you're comparing bilaterally. Um, intraarticular means within the joint, like I said, such as like an articular surface, labrum, or capsule. For scour, it's the same idea that it's going to stress those interarticular structures, but a positive test would be clicking, catching, apprehension, or pain. Labrum and impingement tests. So what is unique about these two is a labor and impingement is they are different, but they will te they will have the same positive test. So clinical presentation it will look a little different, um, but special tests and treatment are going to be the same. So the two tests that are going to be looking at is Fader and Fitzgerald's. The positive test for Fader is that. So fader is just doing that flexion, adduction, internal rotation as pictured. And a positive test for that is going to be reproduction or increase in anterior groin pain, lateral hip pain, or clicking. And then Fitzgerald's, a positive test. Again, you're just looking for that reproduction of pain, click, or apprehension. Um, those clicking is kind of key for, for the labor impingement test. So if you see some click or catching, that could indicate some labrum and you would want to do a Fader or Fitzgerald's. So nerve testing, so these tests are going to be looking at the sciatic nerve, but they're all going to be in different positions. The piriformis test is in that sideline position, providing compression on that sciatic nerve, and they would get some pain or tightness in the buttock or radiating pain down the leg. That would be the positive test for piriformis test. Passive straight leg raise, so they're going to be in supine, and you're going to lift their leg. And depending on when, um, depending on when you reproduce that pain, if it's less than 70 degrees of hip flexion with that those symptoms, then that would be a positive test. And then lastly, slump. So this is, again, going to be looking at the sciatic nerve, but uh, specifically those nerve roots. And the slump test is performed in sitting um, and putting the most strain on the sciatic nerve through cervical flexion as well as hip flexion, knee extension, and ankle dorsiflexion. And you're just trying to reproduce those nerve pain symptoms. Okay, moving on to muscle. So if it's muscle, you know that it's typically pain to, painful to palpate, painful to stretch, and painful to contract. So hamstring provocation is basically an MMT of the hamstring. And you're just going to try to determine if it is a medial hamstring strain or lateral hamstring strain depending on um, internal or external rotation of the hip. The Trendelenburg sign is more looking at the hip abductor's ability to work. So it's a little different than the MMT because it's in a functional position where they're in standing and you're just seeing how long they can stabilize their pelvis in single limb stance. Again, when you're looking at muscle you also want to see, is it painful to stretch, or do they have some tightness that could indicate a dysfunction? So Eli's is going to be looking at the length of the rectus femoris, 
Overs is going to be looking at IT band. Thomas is the ELO psoas. And then you can do a 90-90 straight leg raise that will look at the hamstring length. Okay, practice question. A patient has a referral for eval and treat for hip OA. What clinical findings would you expect? A, positive slump test. B, negative Faber test. C, positive overcess. And D, positive scour test. I'll give you a minute to look this over and we'll discuss. So the correct answer is D, positive scour test. Um, so hip OA, that is just a, we're looking for a general um, interarticular test, but a slump test is going to be a nerve test, so that is not correct. Negative Faber, well, we would expect to see a positive Faber because Faber does look at interarticular a positive overs test would indicate that the IT band is tight. Um, you are probably not going to, that's probably not going to be the most um, important clinical finding that you'll see from a d diagnosis of hip OA. Could you see it? Potentially, but that's not the best answer. So the best answer is positive scour um, because that is another intra-articular test. Okay, and here is just a little summary about all the tests that we discussed today, breaking up, general, labrum slash impingement, nerve, and muscle. And again, we did talk about those specific MLTs, and we didn't discuss any MMTs. Those are um, some basic exam strategies. But if you want a more detailed chart, be sure to check out the Etsy link below, and you will be able to see some of that information. Thanks so much for watching today. Don't forget to like us on YouTube, subscribe to our channel, and turn on those notifications. And we will see you next time on Journey to 600.